Okay, this is the third and final part of this short introductory tutorial series on depth of field settings uh, using nodes and the cycles rendering engine. So in this lesson, we're going to do something different. We're going to take out this f-stop animation that we had set. So I'll take out these uh, keyframes here. Well, let's see. Hey, I said delete it. <laughs> delete, remove keyframe. I'm just going to make this 2.8. 2.8 2.8 I'm going to re-keyframe it at 2.8 and then I'm going to come up to this next one I'm going to make that 2.8 what? 2.8 I'm going to re-keyframe that one like that oh, no I said 2.8 I thought 2.8 I all right, so theoretically it should be at 2.8 the whole way. I don't know why I can't delete that, but we won't worry, won't worry about it at the moment. So basically we have a really fast lens now set in the scene. And you might wonder why I say a 2.8 lens is really fast. Well, consider this. When you set it at 2.8, you look at the you go look at those diaphragm blades in your lens, they open wide open and they're letting in a lot of light. So back in the days of film, when what would happen is as you let more light in what it would do it exposes the film faster because it's more light and so it's a fast lens all right so that's why we call those fast lens they just expose it faster then you can control other settings so we're going to use a really fast lens and the reason is in this case what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the cube and we're going to look at the cube oh no hang on i'm going to get the cube i'm going to move that cube in the scene i'm going to move it further down in the scene like this. Let me see what my camera view sees. See, it still sees it down there. Okay, but maybe I'll just make it bigger. But it's further down in the scene like that. All right, and then in like in wildlife photography, you know, you'll see sometimes these shot this wild animal eating another animal and they're way off in the distance though on those cameras. They have super, you know, long range telephoto type lenses and it makes it feel like you're just you know oh it's right across the street you know but it's not but when they do that when they're focusing way off in the distance like say if with a, let's go get our camera and maybe we'll use like something like a here's our camera here's our focal length maybe we'll use a 1200 millimeter lens you know something like that so it's looking way off let's see what our camera looks at now what's it see uh, well, it's not pointed there, so you know what we're going to have to do? Let's go back to, we're going to make our camera be very specific now where it's looking. So the way to do this, you see where it's pointing in the scene here? It's pointing down at my empty down there, because that's what my camera is targeting, is the empty. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to first take the, let me see, I'm going to, click on the cube, I'm going to press shift S, I'm going to move the cursor to the selected, then I come back here, I'm going to right click on the empty, I'm going to press shift S, I'm going to move the selection to the cursor. So basically I've moved my empty to the exact same location as the cube. And now you can see my l camera lens has got this really long focal length lens looking way down there at the cube. So now when I look at it in camera mode, there it is, I'm looking at the cube way down there. All right. I don't see anything else, but I see that cube for sure. So let's see. Mm. Let's just change it to only a 600 millimeter lens for the moment, so I can try and control my scene a little bit better. All right, that says 600 millimeter like that. I said 600 millimeter. Let's try 300 millimeter. Let's see what it does there. <coughs> Okay, that might be a little bit better to try and get the effect that I'm trying to get. Let's move this. I want to be able to see the other objects in the scene. Let's see, let me move this sphere right in front of it. Let's see what happens there. Zero for the camera. All right, there's the sphere. Let me just move the sphere to the side a little bit. Like that. All right, and then... All right, we'll work with that. We'll just work with the 600 millimeter lens for starters. And we'll let's render it. 
and see what happens. Will they both up oh, see this? So now the cube is out of focus in there, even though am I am I looking at the cube for the camera? Let's see. I click the camera. I'm going down here. Now I want to look at the cube. All right. Now let me re-render it. Looking at the cube. All right. I'm looking at the cube and see suddenly the sphere. Even though the sphere is very close to the cube, it's already out of focus. Even this cube is looking out of focus. But I think that's another issue. I think that might be an issue of my light. I'm going to move this light down here like that, a little bit closer to the scene. Not enough light. And this is actually something that's very common in that type of wildlife photography. You know, when you have a telephoto lens that's like 1200 millimeter or 600 millimeter, you're, they're not very fast. I mean, if you to get one that's like f2.8, it would be a really, really expensive lens. I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars for a lens like that, because basically it has to be a really fat lens to let in so much light to pick up the object that you're looking at way, 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 way off in the distance. All right. So this kind of, you know, was uh, maybe it's good indication as to the similar effect. I didn't have enough light in the scene. All right, let me render it here. All right, now I have more light in the scene, and now this kind of gives us a better idea. I still say that I am f2.8, so maybe it's, let me change my blur amount, this arbitrary blur amount, and see how much that, let's see if we can get it to affect it there. So that's kind of not, let's get, maybe even make it a more powerful, let's, all right, so let's make it even faster. No, let's not make it as fast, let's make it f.56. 5.6 like this. Now they at 5.6 they should both be in relative focus. The cube's still not showing up in focus here. So there might be something that uh it's kind of having difficulty with remember this is just a simulation of it. And you can see I can give you an idea. This is what I mean. It's not a it's not an optical this is not an exact optical replication of the depth of field as you would see through a camera lens. This is a, the reason this is done in the compositing mode, you see we're in the compositing mode here, is because it's a, it's kind of an image processing effect that's applied after the fact. And you can see what it's trying to do. If we look in really close here, this object, there's the image processing above the scene and below the scene, because they're equating depth with this vertical height in the two-dimensional plane. And so this is where their depth of field is located right here. And it's not bad. We just don't see the very front of that cube like that. But maybe it'll make a difference if we just rotate that cube a little bit. Rotate it on Z. Let's see how that actually affects the scene. Let me see here. Let's go look at it a little bit closer. And now if we see right in here, well, there it is. still does a pretty good job right there. But really, all that, if you look closely, the only thing that it can do, right, you see that thing? There's a line there. So it's got that as the depth of field. That's in focus right back there. It's focused at the back point of that object. So let's try and change one other thing. Instead of focusing at the cube exactly because this is actually really important if you have a, if you're doing wildlife photography when I shoot uh, wildlife of deer animals things like that I always make sure my camera's set in manual focus mode and the reason is I want to make sure that I can focus in on their eyeball I want that eye to be razor sharp when I'm looking at it because sometimes if you focus in say at the nose or the ears the eye goes out of focus so there's a really shallow depth of field when you're looking at it way off in the distance so let's see if we can fix this. And the way we're going to fix it is we're going to go grab the original empty in the scene. So the empty is there. We're going to look at it here from this mode, like this in global mode. But notice the empty happens to be focused at the center of the cube because that's where I placed it. Let's move the empty to the front of the cube. All right, now my focus is here. So now my depth of field, you know, a little bit behind and a little bit in front is going to be in focus. But that should be in razor sharp focus now. All right, let's try it. Let's render it. Okay, well, let's see. See if we can see it. Well, not. Oh, no, it will be if we 
we have to I didn't change one thing have to go back into here instead of focusing on the cube now I'm going to focus on the empty as well which happens to be the same place I happen to be looking now let's re-render it and there it is now you can see this corner of the cube is well in focus but the sphere is losing its focus right there and let's change our lens let's make it a faster lens f2 so let's even more light in and more much more expensive lens but believe me that one f stop of difference would make the price go up thousands of dollars for a huge focal length difference maybe not for 600 not on us uh, our lens is only 300 mil that wouldn't make much of a difference price wise but if this was a 1200 millimeter lens oh yeah that would be way up in price all right so let's re-render that here and let's see so yeah we well, see that's out of focus there and that's pretty good so let's try it with a 600 millimeter lens see if we get closer so now with the 600 millimeter at f28 this is actually going to make it uh, have less depth of field and it's kinda hard to tell but you, if you look really close you can see that there's their depth of field line right there on the vertical plane that they've mapped it so that's in focus pretty much I see it between this little chunk is in focus here and let's go back to 300 millimeter and see if we can see the difference and render it there and you can actually see it a little more of the sphere is in focus the line is moved there all right so that's going to be subtleties but we could actually change that that's when your blur th th threshold would really come into play here we'll just maximize we'll max it up like this Uh, to two. All right, so there's that like that. Now let's change it to the 600 millimeter lens. And you see now the sphere is out of focus like that. All right, well, so it's a pretty good simulation, I must say. But you'll just have to experiment with that. I was going to do an animation, but that's a little too subtle to try and give you the effect. Um, and I'm kind of running out of time, way over time on this particular lesson. So I uh, hope that didn't throw you any. D but don't worry if it does because uh, photography is actually a very technical subject. Everybody can take a nice picture. But if you really want to be a professional photographer and do things right and you have these medium format, large format cameras, it's very technical. And so don't expect that, you know, if you don't quite understand this concept between focal length, depth of fields, all that stuff to make sense because it's difficult. All right. So don't worry about it. All right. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.